Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our weekly webinar. The clock has struck noon here in our Cape Town studio, and we're excited to kick off another engaging and informative REI webinar. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Neil Peterson. I'm the founder and content-in-chief of Real Estate Investor, South Africa's leading independent platform for real estate content, education, and news since 2007. And I'm really thrilled to be your host and moderator for today's masterclass. And uh, we're really delighted to have you all join us as I see you all logging on. It's wonderful to have you. And, uh, and this promises really to be a valuable session. So at REI, just so that you know, we're really dedicated to supporting real estate investors, the real estate industry, and the property business community through our various platforms, our digital rei.co.za website, our monthly digital magazine, Real Estate Investor, and our investment webinars, seminars, and also our live investors event. So, and we have many of those events. So today's topic, and it's our weekly webinar topic, is how to unlock wealth and advanced strategies to profit from Airbnb investments. And I will introduce you to our specialist guest presenter today for today's masterclass. So just before, a little bit of housekeeping. If you are registered for today's webinar, we get this question a lot, we will send you a recording. And uh, the recording will also be available uh, on the rei.co.za website if you haven't registered and you can get it under the events and webinars section. So we also encourage you, both new and returning guests, to engage actively, ask questions throughout the webinar. Uh, also submit questions in the Q&A box, which is located on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. And uh, we will deal with those questions um, when we get to the end part of the webinar. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's jump on to the core of today's session, how to unlock wealth and advanced strategies to profit from Airbnb investments. And today we'll hear about uh, from our guest uh, who's going to take us into how you can maximize income. First of all, how to break into the Airbnb market, how to maximize income, and, any, and this is really designed for anybody who's currently either managing property, who wants to get into investment, and those who want to make their first move, particularly into Airbnb. You'll get actionable insights, you'll learn advanced strategies, and uh, whether you either flush with cash or just on a tight budget, this course really is tailored for you. So without further delay, let me introduce our distinguished guest panelist, Robert Booth. Uh, Robin, you can now switch on your cam. I'm not telling him <laughs> to switch off. So he's our winner of the Property Investor Awards in 2018. He's also a serial entrepreneur, international speaker, uh, real estate investor, and property and Airbnb coach. So welcome to you, Robin. Do you uh, want to maybe just tell a little bit more about yourself? <laughs> Um, I, I, I do actually. I've got some pictures of me in my class, <laughs> uh, which you could probably dig up on the internet as well. Because you know, with property investing, there's so much talk out out there about how you can make money, how you can change your life, how you can create wealth, how you can, you know, do all these things. And we we always need to also remember where we come from, and what what steps we took to make it there. And and I think that's part of, I've actually, I dug up a picture of back, well, this must be in 2000, uh, probably about 2001. Um, this was before property was even on my radar, but it's kind of like where stuff started. So uh, let me just go in and, and, and jump into that, Neil. And I think what we've got here, you should be able to see, here's a picture, if I'm not mistaken, of me with some celebrities. Um, <laughs> and, you know, this is more now, not the 20 years ago. But again, you know, you mentioned you know, uh, creating increased uh, income, increased wealth, profits. And for me, the last few years have really been an exploration and a result of having done that definitely through property. Uh, traditionally, more property as in, you know, the buying to let, uh, to see if I can do flips, the back-to-back -back flips to do creative strategies. And then, of course, we're going to get into the Airbnb, which changed the whole game for me as well. Um, but when I look at some of these pictures, of some of these celebrities that I that I have met and, and you know over the years, 
some of those that have stood out the most actually were the ones that you wouldn't think were the smartest. Uh, for example, Sylvester Stallone for me was one of the brightest people listening to him talk about his property journey. I mean, he's a property investor because he doesn't come across like that in his movies, but you know, he's an incredibly successful businessman. And I think all these kinds of, of, of stories just show that anyone can create wealth if they have the right strategy. And I think that's the, the fundamental thing. We, we wanna make sure we, uh, you know, we've got the right strategies in, in what we're doing and, and how we're creating that wealth. And I think, um, yeah, I'm gonna show you the picture now. There we go. That, you should see the picture there. This was me back in, I think 2001, 2002 as a preschool teacher. So I actually trained as a preschool teacher. I had this deep desire to, uh, to instill in children a belief that they too can make a difference to their lives, that they too can create the life that they love to live, as opposed to just follow the standard rat race where they wake up midlife and realize, whoa, what's going on here? And they're not enjoying their work. And I've, I, it, was, it was so passionate for me to do that, that I said, okay, well, I'm gonna actually train as a preschool teacher. I started a school. Um, and you know, really started living that and then sold my school, kept the land and rented that land that I'd bought to other schools. And that was the start of my property journey. And I think that was instrumental in, in making the biggest difference for me. Uh, and then carrying on a couple of uh, years after that, whoops, I've got there. Uh, again, this was just in the last two years, you know, going to Vietnam, going to the US on road trips, uh, meeting there's uh, Oprah Winfrey's partner, Stephen Graham, uh, also an astute businessman, spent a lot of time in South Africa. And again, just reinforcing that with the right strategies, the right property, the right automation, and knowing how to do that, then you don't have to be there on the ground, always doing it for you. And I think that's what my strength is, is creating systems that other people can follow and learn from and copy and do it themselves. And, you know, Neil, you've interviewed yourself, many of the clients who've done my courses and who have you know, been coached by me and, and that they too are now in this. They too have fired their bosses. You know, they've stepped out <laughs> of the corporate rat race. You know, they too have now amassed 20 to 30 doors, properties, some of them magnificent villas in Cape Town, and they're generating large chunks of cash and putting in place teams and, and all from the same starting point. You know, they didn't know anything. Some of them actually had knew nothing about property. They, they started at the Airbnb journey because there's no other strategy where you can get into property with as little money down and as learning those skills so quickly that you're creating a result. I mean, some of these people, after a weekend of just having gone through all the material and content, a week later, they found a property, and we'll chat about how they can do that, and they're earning income from that property literally straight away, which is incredible. I know nothing else that is remotely similar to that, so that's exciting. And talking about that, I know one of the questions that you had posed to me was like, well, you know, how does Airbnb stack compared to other properties? And and, you know, I am Cape, Cape Town based and Cape Town's a tough market to create good returns in. And if you're not doing something super creative, you're just going to get your average kind of 6%, 7% if you're lucky. This top left one here is a house I built in Hart Bay, you know, 7.5 million, 8 million, but I'm only getting 40,000 rand rent. You know, it's not like you're making a lot of money on that. I mean, you're going to have to pay a lot down and hope that you're going to start making some money um, after a while. You know, the, the top right one is a multi-let. You have to be super creative. It's in a in a dodgy suburb in, in Cape Town on Elsie's River. You know, a lot of high, a lot of gangs and high murder rate there, but I can get returns, but it's not always a, a good place to be. Bottom left was a student house. Again, you can get good returns, but it requires real creative strategies. And I wanted something that was a, a, a lot, well, not a lot simple. Well, actually it is a lot simpler. And of course it's just pristine. And then I first came across a property I bought, uh, bought for 3.6, so transfer and just a bit of paint in that first year, um, it equaled to about 80,000 Rand rent. And, you know, when people take a look at that, you know, Neil, when, when I spoke um, on the Robert Kiyosaki stage just a couple of months ago, I realized that people don't believe me if I tell the truth about what we're generating on Airbnb. They, it's too far-fetched. They just say that's not true. You know, I, I shared, I'll give you one actually story, well, kind of story right now. You and I both know this person. Um, mm -hmm. you know, he, he's doing the rent to rent model where he's renting a property uh, in Camps Bay. It's a beautiful villa. He's paying about 150,000 Rand per month rent to the landlord. And then he's subletting on Airbnb. So it's called the rent to rent model, rental arbitrage. And in December last year, 
he made half a million rand profit in just the December month on that property because yeah. the guests were paying 40,000 rand a night. And they were from Joburg, by the way, those guests. They weren't mm -hmm. from overseas where it's flush with money. It was Gauteng people who came to Cape Town as, you know, paid 40,000 rand a night. And you can imagine that literally three or four nights, he's already got his 150K rental for the month and the rest is profit. I mean, it's, it's just insane, some of that. So then people say, like, that's not going to be true. So I thought, okay, well, let me actually show you. Here is a printout of that 4 million rand property that I've shared with you. And I've circled in red there. And I, I know it's a little bit small, but this is because it's a legit screenshot. I haven't photoshopped this. So that's how it shows up on my screen. But in the top right, you can see there where it says, you know, December the 1st, 2022 to uh, March the 1st. So that's just the three months, December, January, February. On, you know, on the top left there, that was 325,000 rand on a 4 million rand property just for those three months. The bottom half is the... 2023-2024. So now it's 404,000, 405,000 gross um, rental, right, from Airbnb. That Airbnb is paying me just for those three months. So now I, I can hear already people say, yeah, but that's just Cape Town. That's just tourism. That's just high season. Okay, so let me take the screenshot of the whole year. So the top right, you can see that January the 1st, 2023 to December the 31st, 2023, and that was 950,000 Rand for that whole year on that 4 million Rand property. So that comes to about your 80,000 Rand, you know, 90,000 Rand rent. And I actually stayed in this property for a month during this year. So if we factor that in, that's over a million Rand. I mean, it's, it's incredible. And, I, and that's why it's such a hot topic at the moment. Around the world, people are shifting to Airbnb short term rentals. And we're seeing that massive growth. And, and we see it throughout South Africa. This isn't just. In Cape Town, we see it in Umschlange, we see Joburg. I mean, Joburg has so many Airbnbs as well. Um, different markets, which is great. Uh, different kind of types of properties. Some people have converted their granny flats or their you know, old domestic quarters, or they've converted garages or you know, those kinds of things. And they're, they're living there and subletting, call it subletting their unit onto Airbnb. I like to call that house hacking. So you hack your house so that you can actually generate extra income. And some people are, are specifically doing whole properties or whole apartments. Um, and there's so many different variations and styles and income segment groups, niche groups. You know, and, and what I like about that is it means that everyone can find a niche that they can excel in, dominate in, and profit from. And I think that's the core. So there's just some proof. I don't know, Neil, if you've got any comments um, about that, because I know the biggest, for me, results don't lie. I only work on results. I don't want to tell anyone, like, oh, Airbnb is great if I can't back it up with proof. I don't want to tell anyone, hey, listen, just do one of my courses or you know, come to some of my trainings and I promise you it will work. I mean, I want to show you the proof that people who've done it are getting those results because results demonstrate replicable, rec replicable results, actually. In other words, not just by one lucky person, but consistently people are, are turning this out and are growing and, and doing something successful. I think that's a significant part. So my next slide is this, but I'm gonna to just touch base with you. Like any comments on what I've just shared so far? Yeah, so yes, yeah, so look, I mean, uh, it, it's facts. We can see the figures. I know a lot of people who are doing that. Um, I'm looking, I'm saying, I, I need to jump into this as well myself. I'll miss that. Um, one of the comments I get quite <laughs> regularly and it comes through quite a lot um, is, is the market not now oversaturated? And you mentioned the Cape Town markets and all that kind of thing, because, you know, we're coming up for a bumper season. I'd like to see what those numbers that you've just put up on the screen looks like for next year and uh, what your expectations are for those numbers for next year. But certainly, I think one of the questions I've got in the back of my mind is to say, well, is the market oversaturated? Am I too late? Is it too late to get into that? So those are my, my comments overall. So there is a lot of talk about Airbnb at the moment worldwide, right? Oh, there's just such supply. Um, is it too late, like you've said, or what's going to happen in the future with regulations? And yes, we're all watching what's going on around the world. And we do realize that there are many different criteria that influence how different cities are adapting or regulating Airbnb, whether it's an outright ban or whether it's a certain kind of regulation. But it's very varied. And of course, if we also look at who is behind the objections to having Airbnb, there is significantly uh, the hotel players who 
it's like they're the old DVD stores that are complaining that Netflix has come in and disrupted the system or the taxis who are complaining about Uber. You know, we, we're seeing a disruption. Airbnb has disrupted it because now I don't have to be an estate agent or rent a vacation rental business to handle queries and properties and manage it. People can just take photographs of their property, up list, upload it and the next day, they could actually have a booking that comes in. Now, whether they're successful or not is where the distinction, the distinguishing factor is. And that's where I distinguish from everyone else that luckily here in South Africa, we're a very lazy group of people. Um, and if you just apply the fundamentals, doesn't matter how many are out, how many uh, other units there are out there, you just have to be in the top five. And if you're in the top 5% of everyone else around you, you're still going to get all the bookings. And those that just thought that they could just wing it are going to fade off because it's not going to work for them. They won't have the automation in place. They won't know how to tweak the Airbnb algorithm. So they're going to fade off and then you know, it, will, it will come back to some kind of a balance. At the moment, people have a perception that it's just so easy. We just have to just you know, list it. Airbnb will do all the marketing and I just have to sit there and take the cash. And what we are experiencing is competition is getting stiffer, but the fundamentals are the same, and that's exactly what I focus on, is just those fundamentals, and that just puts me into the top 5% um, with most of my units and the top 1% in the world. And that makes a massive difference, because that means that there's trust, people are going to book through me, my occupancy rate is going to be a lot higher than everyone else's. You know, some guests, some hosts out there just put one price for the whole year, and then they just hope it's going to work. And then they start to feel a bit disgruntled, or then they start saying, oh, Robin, you know, I'm so tired of, of, of meeting the guests. Like the guests said they were going to meet me at four o'clock and then they didn't. And then they only got there at five and I've wasted an hour. And I'm like, well, yeah, you haven't automated your check-in. You know, you're still sitting there shaking hands. You're still typing their um, check-in instructions as opposed to having videos and automated software that's doing all this for you. Like, are your cleaners outsourced? Do your cleaners get notification of of when there's bookings and what time the booking the exits are all that can be is automated and that's what i focus on so it's an investment strategy whether you just want cash which is the rent to rent model because you're renting for a lot less than if you had bought that property per month uh, your actual outflow of money but your income is significant so a lot of people do rental arbitrage because that's significant cash um, i love the purchase to airbnb because where else can I buy property in Cape Town that's pristine assets and have Airbnb have positive, positive cash flow on all my expenses? 100% bonds plus transfer duties plus all the rates levies plus all the cleaning plus maintenance and still have cash after? I can't do that at all in Cape Town on any other kind of residential property. So for me, it's, a, it's just an absolute no-brainer and it's super exciting. That's why I've got on the screen here. You've got to have a winning mm -hmm. strategy. You know, if you really want to to dominate, you, you, you've got to have a strategy that you can copy, which means someone has to have created step-by-step -step instructions for you just to follow and proof that if you just follow it, you will get that result. And I love the idea of create your own economy. You know, I, I'm reluctant to invest in the stock exchange because basically it's up to that company owner to do well. And if they don't do well, that company, I can't step in and knock on that director's door and say, hey, listen, I want to influence you and change the direction of your company and improve things. Uh, it's, I, I have no control, but in Airbnb, I can. If I'm like, hey, why, why am I not getting my bookings at the moment? I can go back, take a look at my pricing. I can go back and tweak all the little things that we teach in our courses on how to tweak the algorithm. And suddenly I'm back on the first page again. And now I'm getting bookings. I'm like, great. I'm controlling what's happening. It's actually in my hands. Now, I don't want to do that every day. I don't want to do that a lot. But I, I have the ability to tweak things which is uh, an important part of creating wealth. If we're just leaving wealth up to someone else, well, that's a hit and a miss, I think, for many of us, or we just you know, hope that it's going to work. And of course, then be smart, use systems. You know, there's so much automation out there. Um, I have digital locks, for example, that tell me when a guest arrives. The, the actual code for the digital locks is specific to that guest and expires when the booking is finished. So security is really important. We get little gadgets that can that you stick onto the ceiling that are Airbnb approved, so they're not an invasion of privacy, that measure the noise decibel level in that unit. 
So the moment it hits a certain level, in other words, maybe there's a party there, I get notified because it's Wi-Fi enabled and I can phone them and say, hey, listen, there's a no party policy here. You know, you've got to cut this out. So now I don't have the body corporates complaining to me that it's unruly and I don't have neighbors that are complaining because this is all managed. And I think those are just so, so important. Um, and Neil, for you, take action because that's exactly what you said. Like, are you today? <laughs> Definitely exactly. not. And again, I'll say the real reason is because um, you know who to go to. Me. Yeah. You know yeah. who to speak to to give you that <laughs> edge that you don't have to. Like, I mean, I've been in this for, for nearly 12 years. You don't have to pay 12 years of schooling fees to figure that out. And I think mm -hmm. that's that's really important. Uh Okay. Any other comment, or you can see? Yeah. Here. Well, look. Yeah. So I think I think let, let's because you mentioned the strategy and all that kind of stuff. Because I think let's unpack that because you mentioned rental arbitrage already, yep. also about existing properties. Because somebody could have an existing yes. property already, and they're thinking of converting it to an Airbnb. So maybe let's unpack that to say, well, you know, what are the criteria that you're looking for? I mean, obviously, you know, you can go into those details. So maybe let's unpack that strategy a little bit. Okay. And uh, I see the questions are coming through, which is great. So please, the audience, keep them through. We will deal with them at the end. And uh, and uh, so Robin will will, will, will be definitely deal. So so maybe I'll just hand over to you, Robin, then you take uh, talk about those strategies. Okay, I'll, I'll weave what you've mentioned into some of the stuff here. And again, you know, there is just, there's, there is so much that we can, answer and pinpoint and 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 go through and if we don't cover it here then definitely make a note to come to some of the trainings you know get the online courses just upskill yourself because you, just that little bit that you do you're going to be dominating other people there's no one else in south africa who's teaching airbnb the way that south africa needs the airbnb you know there's stuff on youtube you can go out there and look at what the us is doing and other countries and some of those are very applicable here but the south african market is different how we think through things the products that we have available to us how we manage and what we're expecting is different and we've tweaked that so that here in south africa we're actually customizing this to to our communities and, and how it works so very important that part so you mentioned two things, rental arbitrage and the house hack, like people may already have a unit or maybe want to do something with their house, like I mentioned. Let's start with the second one, the last one. So the house hacking is such a great way to start. It's actually how I started with Airbnb. And that is that you see that there's a section of your house, whether it's a, an outside room, maybe a granny flat, could even be a room in your house, Neil, that you could list on Airbnb as a room that guests might actually still walk through your front door, walk through your living room, say hello to you and the family and go to their room. You know, in, in many parts of the world, it's incredibly common to have that. And Airbnb promotes that significantly because hotels don't do that. So Airbnb has a very niche market. And if you don't believe me, go onto airbnb.co.za and look for just a room and you'll probably be surprised at how many people kind of co-live with Airbnb guests. They live in the mm -hmm. same two bedroom apartment. They will sleep in the one um, bedroom and they will share the living room, share the kitchen. And some people love this. It's a great way to get to know culture and you know, visitors and, and Airbnb is quite strict on how they um, profile and make this safe and secure, but that's one model. If you're converting your granny flat net, fundamentals you've got to put in place. Please, 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 you need to be able to automate your check-in. If you have to meet your guest every time, you're going to be running out of time because people are not on time. And guests don't want to be pressured by you saying, okay, I'll meet you at four. And then if I'm not going to be that four, now I feel bad or guilty, or maybe my flight or maybe my travel is only finishing at 10. Maybe I'm having dinner with someone. I'm only going to get your place at 11. Now, what are you going to do? You're going to wait up for me as the guest to come in. So rule number one, make sure it can be automated. If you are converting or looking even at the rental arbitrage at an apartment, for example, uh, in a building, please, please, please also make sure the body corporate allows for short-term rentals. Now, a lot of body corporates don't actually have it in their rules because it's still, we're trying, South Africa is trying to figure out how are we going to manage this? Is it, is it different to long-term renting? And, and all those kinds of things are important 
flags, green flags we want to look at before we go and take a step further on, on making that work. But the most important one for me, besides obviously being allowed to uh, do Airbnb in buildings in a, in a, in a house and neighborhood, that's okay. Cause that's your property or, you know, you, that it's a different scenario. It's not a communal space with common areas within a building, but definitely you need to have uh, been able to do self check-ins like automated check-ins. So the biggest question Neil, I actually have is people are saying, yeah, but why would a landlord rent to me so that I can sublet to an Airbnb? And that's what you've actually got on the screen here is what we call the, the landlord script. I've fleshed this out in detail in all the courses. I can only cover a short, a small amount now just to take you through the thinking because a lot of people just get stuck straight away. It's like, well, this is crazy. No one's going to, to rent this. It's, a, I mean, Airbnb is worse than a tenant. Well, let's actually unpack that. And I think this is the starting point that when landlords see that renting to me, I'm their tenant, their property is going to be totally different if they rent it out to another tenant just down the road who's going to live in that, this property for 12 months. So let's just take the first step. Landlords are always concerned about um, damage. You're like, oh, but you're going to have strangers in the house and all the apartment and they're going to cause damage. Well, Airbnb has a $3 million insurance on every booking. So every booking that someone does, there's a $3 million, ins a $3 million insurance, whether it be they break your table, they damage, they, they drive into the garage door, they steal your stuff, whatever it is, there's $3 million. And my quickest claim, and it was a claim, uh, it was a claim for, uh, uh, oh, I think it was a claim for uh, some linen that had marks and a few other things that had, had, had it, the linen had got damaged. Um, and it was 45 seconds and the claim was reimbursed to me. So it's not like, well, this is two weeks of headaches. It's all online, submit photos, submit reasons, and literally it came through. Um, so really significant is that all that kind of stuff is insured, even third party liability is significant on the Airbnb coverage. The other one that's really important is a landlord say, but Robin, you know, there's just so much wear and tear. And I'm like, okay, well, let's just think about this. You've got guests who are coming to your unit. Now, if they come into your unit, they're going away from home and they're not going to just come to your home and stay there, it's most likely they're coming to your area to do certain things and they're not going to sleep there at night. So you'll probably find that the wear and tear is insignificant because they're never going to be there. They're going to be out and about, which is why they've come to your suburb or area, and then they'll want to sleep there at night. Um, so actually wear and tear is significantly less than a long-term tenant who is always going to be there. The third reason is the cleaning. How often do you think your tenant, your long-term tenant is going to clean your unit like really well well in our cases we have to do this after every guest so it could be three four times a week we having professional teams coming in wiping down walls cleaning inside of cupboards cleaning on top of cupboards if we see small maintenance issues we just sort it out straight away because i'm not going to bug you as the landlord that hopefully in a week's time you're going to come back with some repair or something i'm just going to get it done so as you can see the landlord script is what we have collated that answers and mitigates the concerns of a landlord so that they realize, wow, actually, if I rent to Robin, to me, this property, he's going to have to look after this property because it's his business now in a way that no long-term tenant will. And then it starts you know, the, that kind of cog start turning. And I can go in, we can talk about, but I don't know who's going into the property through to, um, you know, what happens if you don't have guests? Who's going to pay the rent? You know, all these kinds of things. And we deal with all of that in the landlord script. So, you know, it's a, you know, we, we, you can watch these, these landlords, you know, um, their brains turn when they start to realize, oh, wow, this is actually a really good thing. And maybe some people say, well, you know, why don't they do it themselves? You know, like, well, if it's so good, why doesn't the landlord just do it? Well, you know who the best people to rent from are, Neil? The best yes. landlords to rent are yeah. failed Airbnb hosts. Oh, wow. <laughs> because they've already got a fully kitted out rent Airbnb ready unit. So wow. I don't even have to buy furniture. 
I can take it rent ready. It's got all the beautiful linen already. It's got all these designed furniture and I'm coming in and just taking over. The reason though that they failed is because they don't know what to do like how I'm sharing with you now, how I'm sharing the automation, the professionalism, how do you know, the title you put in your listing, what do you write in the profile? How do you set your pricing correctly? How do you add a cleaning fee? How do you automate this all? And then they're like, this is too much work. I don't want it, I'm out. And I'm like, thank you very much. I'll certainly take your property. I mean, we've got some students who, who are so hungry. They just, you know, they take two, three units a week. They just will go, oh yes, I'll come through, have a look. Thank you, sign the lease, done. And there they go and they're off. You know, it's incredible how some of that can happen so quickly. One of my clients, like he took six in the same building in one go. It was from the developer. The developer said, ah, long-term rental, and he got six units in one go, like one afternoon, there it was, you know, and amazing. So uh, if you are subletting in the rental arbitrage, I definitely recommend that you put this into the lease. And again, you know, uh, uh, all of the stuff is in our courses, Neil, as, as you know, which is you mm -hmm. know, uh, so important is this has to be legit. This isn't yeah. under the table. This isn't illegal. Most leases have a, just one clause that says, um, subletting is not allowed unless with written permission from the landlord. That's that's what it is. And you just need to resolve that one. So the landlord, and this is my recommendation to people who are listening here, the landlord agrees to allow the tenant to sublet on platforms such as Airbnb, Booking.com, and Verbo. I put in those, those names as well, Airbnb, Booking.com, Verbo, because I want there to be no misunderstanding about what I'm doing. And the landlord is agreeing to that. And of course, why I love the rent to rent model is, is you can mitigate so much risk because let's say you think this is going to be a no brainer, you're going to earn good money. And then four months in, you realize, whoa, I didn't realize this, or I didn't realize that. So traditionally, because this is still a residential lease between you and the landlord, you the tenant, you can still give them the notice, your 21 business days notice. And sometimes there's a cancellation penalty. But if you're really smart, you can write into your lease that says that in the event that I wish to terminate early, that I can find a replacement tenant that we have agreed on upfront would be applicable or appropriate. And they can either take over my lease or I cede it to them or enter into a new lease with you, the landlord, such that there's no loss of income to you, then there's no penalty to me. And that just means that we can actually exit if we want to at some point if it's no longer working. So we've even mitigated that risk. So there's a whole lot of stuff here, which is, is super, super important. Any questions, Neil, before I go into, well, actually, what is the startup strategy? No, no, look, I think you, you, you've you clarified it very nicely. Um, so um, I'm just excited on the next part because, uh, you know, you've cleared the way in terms of dealing with people that are, you know, concerned about putting out their properties there and even trying to manage it themselves. So um, I think it's all you've covered most bases there. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I'm going to hand over to you for the next one. And uh, if there is that, it's something that does pop up, I'll certainly will uh, put it forward to you. OK, great. And and now we're actually starting to talk about what is the strategy? You know, how do we make this work? And, and there are a couple of fundamentals that are in place. And we, we kind of break them up. And in my courses, I break them up into part one and part two in the advanced sections. You know, and for me, um, there's 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 the section which is so you've got a place because some people, as you mentioned, may want to convert what they've already got into Airbnb. We've actually had a a, um, a student who did the course and had a multi let in Joburg with seven residential units in in his property, and it was coming to the lease end of all of those tenants, and he thought, well, you know, would this be useful to to, to change over, to transform each of those units over time into Airbnbs, and he did. And we already know multi-lets are a good cash generating property strategy. And now he's even making double what he was doing in the multi-let rental income. So again, it's, it's, it's really interesting. There's a, you know, and, and, and he's actually Joburg based and people, because they often think, you know, Cape Town, that's where it's all happening. Not at all, because in Joburg, a lot, I have to go to Joburg to go to business. And he's kind of marketed more for the professionals to come through 
you know, it, it's set up as that. There's a workstation. You can do your, you know, your work and then obviously, you know, go to Santon or wherever is your business and then you can leave. So it, they call them digital of, nomads, digital yeah. nomads. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. I mean, if people get stuck on it's only tourists and families and vacation time. Well, then this isn't for you because you, your thinking has already just limited you to what is possible. And, and that actually, Neil, has always been the biggest challenge in property investing is, is the, the perspective that people believe is, is the truth is often the thing that, that, that holds them back. I mean, one of my clients, when he, he came to me and said, listen, I, I, I'm what, I've heard about Airbnb. I want to get into it. Um, and, and I just said to him, said, and there's just one thing you need to do, and that is you need to take action. As your coach, if I'm saying to you, this is what you can go and do, and I recommend you go and do it, and you go and meet those agents, and you go and you look at these apartments, and, you know, actually, uh, I'll, I'm going, yeah, this is actually him here. He, he found a property, this is uh, Dean, and there in the top right, you know, he's just like, wow, man, you know, I kind of never believed this would work, but, you know, here's to rental arbitrage and making it work, because that's exactly what he said. He came back to me and he said, um, there was no ways I believed that this would work, and I didn't believe that it would generate income, but I just trusted that the system worked, and I just did it, and he just took action. And that, I think, is super important, is that your ability to take action doesn't actually depend on whether you believe it works or doesn't work. You just need to take that action, and I think that is the significant part, because otherwise you're just going to keep doing what you've always done, and you're going to keep there forgetting what you've always got. And if you're upset with what you've got, you have to do something different. <laughs> you have to do something different. That's taking action, and rather take action on a tried-out system than taking action where you just wing it and like throw your money into the wind, hoping it's going to land. That's that for me is crazy investing in general, whatever you're doing, whether it's stock markets or property or all those kinds of things, you know, have your ducks in a row. And that's exactly what it, what it is. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, you know, like a conservative numbers guy. I like my numbers. I love doing stuff on data. I'm not just, oh, that looks nice. Let me just buy it or let me just rent it out. I go, I, I look at the data. Uh, I can, you, you can actually go and, Look on websites, they're free websites where you can type in the address that you're wanting to use for Airbnb, even your house. And just like Lightstone and CMA and Windy and all of those softwares, this website will also tell you what you could be earning through Airbnb on that address. Just like you would if you were getting a CMA analysis or a lifestyle analysis to figure out what the rental is or what the, the house value is that you're looking at. So that actually means there's data out there. And then we can start assessing this, looking at it, and we can, we can make informed decisions. And that, I think, is super useful. So just what you see in front here, uh, when I talk about Airbnb strategies, the, the fundamentals are you want to start generating cash as soon as possible. And if you actually follow the strategy, you can start generating incredibly soon. I mean, I start, I had bookings a month before I took occupation of my unit. So I hadn't even got transfer yet, but I already had bookings because I can already do so much into the future before the transfer, or in this case, before key handover on a rent to rent, that people can still book you know, into the future. It wasn't that I had to first have, uh, I had a signed lease. So I'm not talking about like just speculating and putting it out there, but I had a signed lease and all that in place. But, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff there. I mean, there actually, this says there, you know, take bookings even before you take occupation. And then there's a certain strategy which we've worked, worked really well, where you want to get your reviews up, all those kinds of things, how to ask for reviews, how to Share with your guests that when they leave a review, which is what they do after they've stayed at your place, they can, um, you want to make sure that, that the review that they leave doesn't feel forced. Because South Africans don't want like, hey, please leave me a five-star review so that I can do better next time. Like, I, I, don't, I will never leave a review like that um, for someone if I feel forced or manipulated. So then how do we get our guests to, to want to leave a review from their motivation, not just from mine. So those are all the important templates that's there. And Neil, you know what? A lot of people just think like, well, uh, you know, it's there. Uh, if they leave a review, that's great. If they don't, well, that's also great. I'm like, this is my business. I'm going to ask no. for a review four times 
or up wow. to four. And it's all automated. So I don't do it. I don't sit there typing in, hey, could you please leave me a review? It's all automated so that, you know, it sends out after the second day, after the fourth day, and after the 10th day, and then the 13th day, cleverly worded, all personalized, again, through software and automation. I go through all of this um, in, in those courses. Actually, here's a good example. Here is some of the messaging automated to the guests and then to the team and the cleaning teams. All of this you can do and you know, I share. And we've tested this over the years. You know, when is the best time to send a message? You know, for example, uh, some international guests, if you're doing that kind of international market, they're going to be landing and they probably haven't yet got data and cell phone numbers, which means if you only send your check-in instructions on the day of them checking in and they land and they don't have data, well, how are they going to get the check-in instructions? Yeah, but they've got Wi-Fi at the airport. Okay, so you're asking your guests to get Wi-Fi at the airport. Now they're stressed because they don't know where they're going and they're going to get Wi-Fi and hopefully they haven't landed at midnight. But let's say they get Wi-Fi and then they get, here's your instructions. And they're like, okay, but how do we get there now? Because we're going to get a car or get an Uber, but I don't have Wi-Fi or, or mobile reception while I'm traveling here because they haven't landed. So all these things we've thought about about when to message, what to message, how often to message, and this is significant. All those kinds of things are super, super important. And I guess you can see here as well, you know, all these different days of checkouts, how we're um, explaining it to people, all this kind of stuff is super important. And now, Neil, you can actually start to see why, I know I said, if you follow these strategies and techniques, you will be in the top 5%, if not the top 1% in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So when What's your average... What's your success rate in terms of the, you know, doing that uh, uh, that rating? I, I have a 19 out of 21 reviews. So that's, that's a 93% review rate. So that for every 21 guests, I have 19 who leave a review. And wow. probably 98 of that are five stars. But it's not five stars because I've asked. It's because I mm -hmm. know also what to do to make sure I'm getting those five stars. Mm -hmm. you know, the thoroughness of the cleaning and the, the attention to detail and, you know, all those things, especially, for example, like some people, they try and make their apartment, I guess, like social media, look better than it is. So then the person gets there and it's like, wow, you told me this is a spacious, lovely apartment. And then I get here and it's this dingy, dark thing that's no views, you know. And there's a rating when the guest can say, were the pictures accurate to what you experienced? And they can say, no, it wasn't. So you kind of shot yourself in the foot there, trying to promote this to something it wasn't, and now you're going to get a bad review. So all these little kinds of things do add up and are significant. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Um, so we were chatting, maybe you've already got something, right? Maybe you've already found something, but then once the, bug's, once the bug has bit, it's like, well, if that was like that and I could earn 10, 15, 20,000 rand extra per month on that one, well, what's stopping me from scaling? And then we move into a whole different world of automation and channel managers and ways to streamline and, and all those things start to make a massive difference, including how to find the cleaning companies, the contracts to take out with the cleaning companies where, you know, they're also are bound by certain things, especially cleaning, because your cleaning team is super important, and the impact if they don't clean correctly. So all these kinds of things are explained. I actually spend a lot of time also on sharing, I mentioned about the gadgets, which are the best door locks I found, uh, cameras that are motion, obviously motion sensored and Wi-Fi enabled. Because if you do have your own Airbnbs, you'll realize there's some nights you're like, it's 10 o'clock at night and the guest hasn't even arrived and they haven't messaged me. And then you're sitting there, hey, are you okay? Have you found the place? Because you're worried that they haven't. Whereas in my case, a lot of that is all automated that you know, I can get notifications when you know, the guest checks in, self-checking through the locks because the locks are Wi-Fi enabled. There's, there's a whole range of stuff that I share over my, you know, from my journey specifically around um, what works best on that. 
Um, Can you maybe just elaborate just a little bit there, Robin, on, you know, you say finding the property that will work, because that's key, because a lot of people have a perception Airbnb is only in sort of the Atlantic seaboard of the Western Cape. You've got to have a view of the sea, and that's it. And you probably use one example now. Is that the truth? <laughs> and because I know of a lot of other areas within the Western Cape, and also you mentioned Kauteng as well, um, which is outside of those very popular areas, those sort of holiday destination type areas, which are yep. quite successful. Do you want to maybe just comment and elaborate a bit on that? Um, usually what I do is I start actually from the other side. I kind of say, where do you think the, the interest is where uh, there could be Airbnb? And then I say, well, go to Airbnb and take a look at how many other listings there are in that area. If there are a lot of Airbnbs, then you know there's demand because there's mm -hmm. no way you're going to have that many Airbnbs if it wasn't working. If you find a place where there are no Airbnbs, I'll be concerned because it means there's probably not a lot of demand. And even though you're so excited because, oh, I'll be the first to Airbnb here, you know, the challenge is not many people are, are going to do it. It's a bit like, here. Yeah, I mean, I'm in Neisner. I live in Neisner. And there's, there's no Uber here in Neisner. And you kind of think, well, even a tourist who comes to Neisner, and we have thousands of tourists who come through Neisner, they're going to have hired their own car, and they're coming up the garden route. So from the start, there are not a lot of people who are going to need an Uber in Neisner. So the same kind of scenario is go where the market already is. That's my belief about it, because it's so much easier to dominate an existing market than try and forge your own one. So in this case, all you do is just go to airbnb.co.za, type in where you want to travel to or go to, and have a look in the surroundings. And you will see hundreds of Airbnbs all around that area. And that will give, give you an indication. Are they mostly you know, properties, like full properties, houses, apartments, or are they rooms? Are they granny flats? What are the price points? And then that should give you an indication of what areas look interesting. And then, like I mentioned, you go to a website and whoever's listening, you know, take note of it. It's called adna.co, not co.za, just .co, air, like A-I-R, D-N-A, D-N-A, like your blood DNA, adna.co. And you'll see straight away, there's a little uh, search bar, type in there, the address that you're interested in, and it will kick out potential um, estimated uh income from Airbnb that you can get on that. And then that's the way you could start looking at that. Then what I do is I will go into property 24 or private property, and I'll look for what are the rentals of similar kinds of units, two bedroom, one bathroom, or a four bedroom house. And I look to see what that rental amount is. And then using those two, I can start to calculate, well, what would my expenses be? What would my income be? And I can start generating that profit. Now, what's what the question that you may also ask, which is, the ADN, the ADNA report that comes to me says this is your expected annual income. Because obviously there might be certain seasons. And it says this is what your expected occupancy rate would be. And this is what your average daily rate would be. So it's already giving you that data. And based on that, you can do a fairly accurate uh, calculation. And that's a solid point for you to start getting ready. Then you would go and actually walk through um, and take a look at that property, you know, go do a viewing. Um, you can do it remotely, as in, you know, a lot of my clients and students who do these courses, they live in Joburg and they've got properties in, in Cape Town and they've got properties in Durban, but they live in Joburg because once they've got the fundamentals in place, then it can be managed remotely. So there are a whole lot of different ways in which that can, which you can find properties like that. Awesome. Great. I think you, there's some really uh, golden nuggets here for people to pick out from. And uh, yeah. so, I mean, I'm, I'm getting excited as you speak along here, Robin. So um, really some good information over here. Um, I see you got some stuff on your courses because I yeah, think so, I mean, I, I this is key. Yeah. yeah. And I keep because I, Go for yeah. it. No, no, no. I'm just saying that, you know, you know, one of the things I've realized is that, you know, if, you know, we could listen to you, we can all take action, which is great. And there's going to become a time that there's, there's probably a piece of the puzzle that we've missed. 
And uh, and then I'm just saying to the to the audience here now is that you know you probably need to to follow and and work with somebody um, like Robman who's got not only many years experience but he's also doing it today and he's adapting with the market and he's leading the charge. So um, and so just to the to the audience really you know I think if you want to get into it. Yes, I think take action. I agree with that. But I think also really consider going on a course and doing it first. And obviously, Robin offers these courses in Airbnb. So over to you, Robin. No, I, I think, Neil, you know, it, it's a, when people, I mean, you started this conversation today around, you know, is it too late to get in? And, and I'll say that, that with the increased supply, before you just kind of had to be average and you'd still make good money. Now you need to be in that top 5% and you will make a lot more money at that top five, but you're going to need to be better than all the other people out there. And that is the fundamental thing. You need to know what's going to give you that edge and that you can learn in a weekend. I mean, people do these courses in like a weekend. And then of course there's continued learning. You always refine and, you know, we've got groups where people ask questions and they, you know, which lock is better? And hey, guys, what do you do if this happens? And we've got specific groups which which help people with that because you know, property investing can be daunting if you're trying to do it on your own. And there's so many little intricacies. Well, what happens if and what happens then? And we've realized, well, you know, we create those support structures to, to help people start up. And actually, in those courses, um, people get that support from the rest of the community. They join our WhatsApp groups and they can ask straight away. And there are experts who reply back with, hey, you could try this, or this is what I do, or this is how I um, differentiate or would handle that problem. And you can see here, these are just some of the, the piece, uh, some of the responses that people have shared over the, over the years. I haven't met most of them. One, actually an interesting one was this one. I had no idea who he was, but he just sent me a Facebook message said, hey, just thank you. I wanted to just share this with you. And I, I, I read it and I was like, it's like, you serious? If you like made that much money and, and made this work. And it's, you know, it's one thing if, if I feel like I'm helping someone, but if they're just doing this on their own and making it work, that's significant. I mean, the, if I'm looking at what he's got here, that, that's incredible. I mean, 3 million Rand per year net. I mean, uh, yeah. So I must actually find out who, you know, who he is and go and speak to him about it because that's just amazing. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. so, Absolutely. You know, that, that is great. And, and, and like you, know, you said to, to me at the, at the beginning of our call, um, mm -hmm. you know, we, we're going to you know, do a training where we will actually do face-to-face, -face, not just online. Because, of course, someone can. They, can. they can go get the course. You could start actually in 20 minutes. Someone yeah. could get going because it's all online. They have lifetime access. All the mm -hmm. skills are there, all the templates, all the messaging, everything is there. How to set it up, how to create your furniture lists, contracts with cleaners, finding cleaners, you know, scaling, finding properties, all that kind of stuff is already mm. there. But sometimes people also want to just, you know, ask their specific questions or some of them actually want to come and say, Robin, here's my listing. Tell me what am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. And we will cover those in the trainings as well. So, you know, you did twist my arm and say, let's do a training towards the end of the year. And I said, yeah, we'll absolutely. So people need to reach out to you, Neil, just to, we haven't said the date yet, but just so that they, that, you know, we can let them know when, when they keep. Absolutely. Um, and I mean, personally, my recommendation is get onto the course so that by the time we actually meet and you're ready, like we can really delve into depth and optimize as opposed to just wait for two months and then you start and then, you know, we've delayed time and let's, let's get going. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, one of the benefits I think uh, for everybody here is that, you know, once you finish with the course, you get started immediately and, you know, you're going to start looking for a rental property, a rental arbitrage property. So, you know, so you can take action. So, and, and it's not that you're going to have to have, you know, unlimited amounts of money. You don't have to wait for the banks. There's no sort of, you know, waiting for the property to transfer and all yep. these different kind of things. It's pretty much you take over a rental contract and you can move immediately. 
which is which is very important. So before we get to that slide there, Robin, and I want yes. you to continue with that, I want you to just deal with three questions because there are three questions there related to what you were presenting about. Right. I think you saw them pop up on the screen. And then let's talk about the limiting yourself after that. So what about ethical considerations around Airbnb? In other words, leaving a sour taste in your mouth in residential areas. Now, you touched on that briefly in terms of the noise levels and all that kind of stuff. But I've heard, and I will just add to that, um, in certain, uh, let's let's say, let's call it a block of flats and they've been used as Airbnb, it becomes quite noisy. So the noise, it's probably the noise factor is the biggest issue around that. So um, how do you deal with it, you know, with that noisy sort of uh, <laughs> noise monitor that you have in there? So maybe just talk a little bit about the ethical considerations, leaving a sour taste of the residents. So I maybe if I we just take a step back, that's not limited to short-term renting. Okay. Because anyone can have a party yes. there, long-term tenant, and they could have Correct. it every week, have a bride yeah. where everyone stands there shouting and dancing. And that, you know, so it's not limited to short-term rentals. Yes. What we find well, a couple of years ago is people were renting out Airbnb units so that they could go and have parties because they don't have to clean up the next day. They can just leave it and, and, and disappear. And Airbnb came down very strongly on that and implemented a whole lot of algorithms over the last two years where they look at, okay, so Neil, you've booked this Airbnb two kilometers from your house and you booked it for six people. Like, why would you be doing that just on a Friday night for one night booking? And then they actually block you. So they mm -hmm. already have a whole lot of algorithms in place for that. And then we have our own internal ones. We have, for example, in our messaging, we have strong regulations that say no parties, no social events, you know, no commercial filming. And we even state that and we confirm that. And I have a message that goes out if someone is on who books a one day on a Friday or a Saturday, I say, you know, our policy is to just make sure that you know what our house rules are because you're just booking a one night on the weekend. Please confirm with us X, Y, and Z. And in mm -hmm. that case, we've actually shut down that significantly. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I have the noise uh, monitors in the, in the units as well as the CCTV cameras facing out of the apartment from the front door. So they never look in for privacy and Airbnb is very strict with that. They will shut you down so quickly if you have any camera looking into the apartment and i get notified when people go in front and if i'm suspecting something i look there and i can see if they're more than people who are going in and then um you can actually get them chucked out which is what yeah. i you know what can happen mm -hmm. so I, that's not a major thing for me what's also super interesting just as a side note is that if you're a neighbor to an airbnb that's noisy you can go onto airbnb and you can lodge a complaint about that listing, that it's noisy. That's how strongly a Airbnb is taking um, this thing called ethical um, okay. in neighborhoods. So they will then go to that listing and say, guys, it's a no party policy. You can't do this. You, you as the host, if you do not sort this out in future, we'll take you down. Wonderful. Good to know. Okay, two quick ones before we get on to the rest. Are you always on the hunt for a cleaning company to service the units or do you have, have to develop a relationship with one company? And there was a website that you mentioned checking the income potential of a specific address. So the first one is a cleaning company. And uh, do you use one or many? I'm sure you well, use so many. The, the, cleaning, <laughs> the cleaning is the most important part of your unit because it's the thing that guests are going to comment on if it's not done well. And in many ways, they're your eyes and your ears because I don't go around looking at all my units. Did the guest leave it nice? What's broken? So they're the ones who are going to look at things. And there's a whole lot of strategies that I suggest about how you do this, that photographs are taken, cleaning manuals are set up, online check, sh check sheets that you, know, you get updated on what's going on, how to manage electricity, all those kinds of things. Actually, if you can systemize that, that's a big weight off your shoulders. In the clean scenario, I always say you have to have two, if not three, backups because people are sick. Cleaning companies say, oh, this is too much. I'm out. And then they drop you. In my case, I had, you know, when I was in Vietnam last year, uh, my, the, the owner of the cleaning company I was using died. She fell off her roof while she was her own roof, not my roof. Um, during winter, she was trying to fix a leak and fell through the roof and broke her neck and died. And and suddenly I'm in Vietnam 
and I get a call that says, listen, this person's died, but my policy is I always have backups. So it was very quick for me just to bring in the, the second company. Not that they were my team, but I'm catering for curveballs and all those kinds of things. So when you, so yeah, I hope that answers that question where you're, you're always testing. And even now, actually, we test part-time cleaners in the event that if our other reliable ones can't do it, then can we still have a backup very quickly? Because I never want to get to a point where I can't clean a place because, wow, the penalties are just so hectic if Airbnb comes and says, well, you know, the guest came in, everything was dirty, it's not ready. You know, you know that, that's, we can mitigate that. And that's what, you know, is what I focus on. And then airdna.co, airdna.co. Okay. Great. And I see while we were talking, there's two quick other questions. What rules or regs? And I know we cover that quite, uh, you know, in depth. What rules or regulation can we expect in South Africa? We, we don't, you know, and I'm worried about buying a property and I can't rent it out if the laws change. So maybe you can maybe just share what what are the laws, some some of the laws overseas on that, and, and what do you expect, or and and when do you expect it? <laughs> I mean, again, there's so many variations. If we take a look at uh, New York, and already New York, you know, where it had um, fixed rentals, like rental uh, caps, and there are a whole lot of things. Their regulation now is that the, the host needs to also live on the same property. There's some regulations that say you can only rent for 90 days out of a whole year, which is like, well, that's weird. You know, like, <laughs> imagine that. If anything, I think that's worse. Like, imagine you only been able to rent for 90 days, and for the rest of the time, it stays open when everyone's complaining that Airbnb is taking places where people want to live and now you're limiting it to be... So there's a, there's a whole lot of weird things. And if people quote Florence, for example, is another one. Florence is very different. You know, these medieval cities where, um, where you have so many tourists that the locals don't want the tourists, where they actually are rude to tourists and say to tourists, get out, you know, I can understand that those that their communities, the, the feel of this old medieval city, you know, changes and and then they can't live there anymore. You know, I can understand that. Cape Town or South Africa is not like that. We're still very much a tourist country. So um, I don't foresee the, that being the issue for for us on that line. But then more importantly, you know, the people that are in our networks are in direct communication with the people designing those white papers and the you know the the regulations such that we can actually have those communications with the people who decide so that we can yeah. inform them as to what's going on and i think that's more important than what they're going to decide is that we're in communication with them so that we can one be the first to know because i do want to know if there's going to be some rule that's going to change something i want to know because i've always again got backup plans um mm. But, you know, more important is, is that you know, we want to inform the decision makers. And I think that's that's still going to be there. No? Okay, great. Okay, right. I see, just see we're running out of time. So, so maybe just, you know, if you could finish off maybe, you know, your final thoughts. The last and slide. Why... The last slide, yes. Neil. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's the same thing that I was sharing about, you know, whether you believe something. It was actually Henry Ford who said, you know, whether you, whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, Either way, you either way you're right, you know. Yeah. And, and and that if you tell me Airbnb is a waste and is never going to work, you're right because you're never going to try it. You know, yeah. if you say it's going to work and you're going to do what you need to do to make it work, of course it's going to work. One because you've got a tried and tested system, you can see the proof of people yeah. who've, who've copied it. And I think that this last slide is just fantastic. It's like, you know, for those who doubt it or are not sure, even if you don't think you can, but you still take that action. You're, you've got a good chance of yeah. success because action leads to results and you'll then mm -hmm. change. So like I mentioned, Dean, you know, his first one was like, this is never going to work, but he just trusted me, did it. Now he's got five units, six units, you know, mm. and you know, he's got buildings in Joburg as well um, that are yes. student housing. Um, you know, he was a, one of the run of finalists. The finalists. The year. Yes. Yeah. In so, the year. I was actually going to add to that to, to actually mention that to everybody. Yeah. So, I mean, that definitely counts for something in terms of, you know, 
And in fact, you had a couple of other students also, successful students. Every, every, <laughs> every year I have about three or four students either winning the Investor of the Year or the or runners-up or finalists in it. And, and it is because, you know, you follow the right strategy and the right insight and you're going to be successful and make money out of that. So very much so. Absolutely so, awesome. Well, I look forward to Neil and seeing so people just, at the live event. But, but you've got a link for them, I think. Exactly. Yes, yeah. Well, look, there's a link, obviously, for the uh, online stuff, which people can sign up immediately for that. And uh, so if somebody wants to do, if you could just ask my colleague, I think it's already in the box. Uh, I will send it through. It actually is. It's actually in the, the chat box. You can see for Robin's course. Uh, um, and we'll just put that in again, just for those that maybe have missed it. And uh, so, no, no, this particular one was what well, there's some questions which came in over here. So we didn't actually answer all the questions, but we we will deal with them a bit later. So I suggest we've, we've run out of time and we'd love to carry on. But I suggest reach out to, to Robin. We're going to be communicating to you on two levels. One, we're going to give you the recording. Two, we're going to offer you an opportunity to sign up for Robin's course. I encourage you to do that. You can do it online immediately. And you can get cracking immediately. So, um, so, so I encourage you all to do that. And and so, I just want to thank you, Robin, for all your input today. I think it's been really a great discussion. We will let you know in terms of when the course will be live. We will communicate to everybody that did sign up for this event. And I know there was more than seventy odd people that did sign up, and so there's massive interest here. So, um, so certainly we'd like to see you live, uh, certainly on those courses. So thank you very much once again, Robin. And just before we close, I want to remind our audience of our next webinar. It's next Thursday, same time. It's 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock. And it's making money in student accommodation with specialist Retta van Rooyen, which you know you've also been playing in that market as well, haven't you, Robin? And it's a multiple income. You know, you're not reliant on one tenant to fill the unit. It's multiple tenants, and it seems to be. So once again, you can also register on the rei.co.za website. And to to everybody that joined, we to our audience, thank you very much. Many of you stayed on right to the end, and uh, we really appreciate your active participation and engagement. I encourage you to reach out to Robin either directly or to us, uh, or, or just to sign up for his course and uh, ready to get going. This is a massive opportunity to make money. Um, you know, we, we, we've seen the proof, and I think it's really been a great uh, sort of he's opened he's really opened up a beautiful can of worms here to make money <laughs> so well done to you Robin on that and uh, thank you and we'll certainly will see you I think certainly again on a webinar going forward so to you thank you for everybody else thank you for joining us and uh, take care and goodbye until next week and this is Neil Peterson and Robin Booth signing out see you next week